Hello Mutuals and welcome back. Today I am talking about the five boundaries that I implement when it comes to having clients in my therapy practice. But before we get started, if you haven't already, gone ahead and hit that bell so that you get notified whenever I post mental health content. And since you're already here, you might as well go on ahead and subscribe. I'm a therapist. I make mental health content from lifestyle, from being a therapist, to running my private practice, to being a client. Yes, because I'm a client too. Welcome. Let's jump right on into it. These are gonna be the five boundaries that I set with clients in my private practice. <laughs> Number one, cancellation policy. Cancellation policy is very important, not just for the clients, but also for me as a therapist. I learned early on in my career when I contracted in a private practice that did not have a cancellation policy that it was very hard for me to feel sustainable in the field if I can't pay my bills. If clients are randomly not showing up, if clients are late canceling, how am I going to sustain my life? And at the time, I was making like $45,000 a year. So trust me. Oh my God. Wow. Every appointment counted. With that being said, I did not want to feel that resentment that could build up as it relates to clients not showing up at their appointments. As it, I did not want to have that resentment build up because let's be honest, this is my job, this is my livelihood. But also, I have a cancellation policy that is non-biased. What does that mean? If a client is a single mother and they could not find childcare, go ahead, bring your child in with you. We can work with that. Also, let's say if a client was like, man, Shani, I've been throwing up and I can't make it. I get that. But the reason why I have a non-biased policy is because I do not want to be in the position to determine what is an emergency for said clients. Because because let's be honest, some clients have referred friends or family members. And the last thing I want is for two clients to be communicating. And one client's like, yeah, I was throwing up and um, you know, I didn't even have to pay the cancellation fee. And then another client's like, oh wow, I was running late because I got held up at a work meeting and Shani made me pay the cancellation fee. I want to make sure that I ethically run a private practice and that I am fair across the board. So yes, it does not matter what happens in the 24 hours, that person is responsible for the full set fee. Number two, my practice is primarily telehealth. So that means that I don't see clients in person. So I had to make sure that I implemented some boundaries around that. And the first one is that I have to see your face. Yes, I understand that some clients take phone calls and some clients are okay with the camera being off. Me as a clinician, I need to see the client. One, I want to be able to recognize if the client is in a safe space. Number two, sometimes the client isn't able to verbalize how they are feeling and I can see that they are physically changing. So what that allows me to do is to be present and in the moment. If a client is talking and I notice that they are choking back tears, I might stop and say, hey, it looks like you were about to cry there. Am I wrong or do you, do you want to process that? I want to be able to recognize and connect the mind and the body, physically and mentally. Number three is absolutely no driving. Absolutely not. We are not driving when you are in telehealth. That is dangerous. <sighs> If I notice that a client is driving, hit the signal. Hey, hey, yeah, uh, hey girl, what's up? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely not. You can stop that car and call me back. I want to make sure that my clients are safe. Number four, sessions are 53 minutes long. I let clients know this on the first appointment. The reason for that is because I have a certain amount of time between clients to go to the bathroom and document notes. And I want to, again, keep it fair across the board. So I let clients know on the first session that sessions will end on the 53 minute mark. Now, if I am running late, I will let sessions go for 53 minutes. So let's say if I come into the call and I'm five minutes late, instead of ending on the 53 minute, I will end on the 58 minute and I will take care of on the back end me running behind in session. So that is a boundary that I hold. And it also allows me to wrap up the session nicely because the client knows when the session is going to end. So usually about 10 minutes before I start to lead the session into a way where we're starting to wrap up, we're identifying, we're going to be labeling, what are we gonna be doing for homework? We are also going to conceptualize the entire session, 53 minutes only. And my final boundary that I have with clients is that 
texting is not a substitute for sessions. If I am not in a session, I am not doing therapy. The reason why I have this boundary is because it goes back to the other previous boundary, which is I have to see your face. For me, you have to be present and I have to see your face in sessions. Therefore, texting to me is a very subjective matter and that is something that I have not had a lot of practice in, if I'm also being honest, is how to have a therapy session through texting. Now, do clients text me things outside of sessions? Absolutely. And when I reply, I reply in a way that says, oh, thank you so much for sharing this with me. One, do you need an additional session? Or two, is this something that can wait until the next time that we meet? Boundaries are important. Boundaries protect us. They also protect our clients. And in operating and running my private practice, I want to make sure that we can have healthy relationships. Are there any boundaries that your therapists have that maybe I don't have that I missed. I'm sure I have other boundaries, but these are my top five. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I want you to know that I appreciate you. Now go out there and own it. Deuces.